Hello, my name is Ron Stanko, and this video demonstrates the loose tube cable end preparation for splicing. Cable end preparation and splicing must be performed by personnel who are trained and familiar with handling optical fiber cables, cable components, and splicing accessories. Materials required measuring tape, china marker, aramid shears, diagonal cutters, needle nose pliers, preferably with rounded edges, cable snips, rotary cable slitter, fiber tube score, hook blade razor knife, lint free wipes, regent grade 99% alcohol, safety glasses, and gloves. Proper safety requirements should always be followed and local practices maintained. It is recommended that the installer wear protective eye gear and gloves during many of the installation steps to avoid possibility of bodily injury. Determine the end location of cable where the splice point is to be located. Mark cable 1 to 4 inches from the end of the cable. Adjust the cutting depth of the rotary cable slitter to approximately 90% of the jacket thickness. If the cable is armored, adjust the cable blade to cut through the jacket and score the armor. Ring cut the jacket or armor to complete the removal. Flex the cable slightly at the cut to complete the opening of the jacket. If necessary, adjust the cutting depth and repeat the process until the end piece of the jacket or armor can be pulled off and into the cable. Measure and mark the length of the cable to be stripped according to the manufacturer's recommendation for the splice and termination system being utilized. Ring cut jacket with rotary cutting tool. Flex the cable slightly at the cut to complete the opening of the jacket. If necessary, adjust the cutting depth and repeat the process until the jacket or armor is completely cut through. Locate a rip cord below the jacket or armor at the end of the cable. There will be one or two rip cords, typically yellow, blue, orange, or red, depending on the cable type. Using the diagonal cutters, cut a notch in the jacket or armor next to the rip cords. Using rounded edge needle nose pliers, grab the end of the rip cord, wrap the rip cord around the pliers, and rotate several times. The rip cord will bite into the jacket and armor for an easier start. After about an inch or so, unravel the cord and rewrap it to form a T-handle on the pliers as shown. Pull the rip cord down the length of the cable to the ring cut created. Remove the jacket material to expose the cable core. For single rip cord cables, gently pull the cable core through the opening created by the rip cord. Do not exceed the cable's minimum bend radius. With the aramid shears, cut off the strength yards, rip cords, water blocking tape, and binder yards, leaving about 12 inches of yarns from the end of the jacket. Using a cable knife or utility razor, cut the helically applied binder yards at approximately three inch intervals. Remove the binder yards from the cable to within three inches of the jacket. Make additional cuts in the binder yards if necessary. Leave several inches of rip cord in the event that you need to install bond clamps for armored cables. Carefully separate the buffer tubes from the core one at a time. Be careful not to kink the tubes during handling. If the tubes are covered with flooding gel, clean them with the appropriate gel cleaner. With the diagonal cutters, cut off the central strength rod leaving about 12 inches from the end of the jacket. The rod will be cut to length during the assembly of the splice closure. Be careful not to cut any of the buffer tubes. It may be necessary to remove some outer coating off the strength member in order for the strength member to fit into the closure strength member bracket. Do so by using a hook blade knife and removing one to two inches of the outer coating. To break out fibers from the buffer tubes, ring score a tube approximately 36 inches for fiber splicing and tray storage. Gently flex the tube at the score location to complete the opening of the tube. Pull the free tubing off to expose the fibers. Use dry lint-free wipes to remove the buffer tube gel from the exposed fibers. Begin near the buffer tube and work towards the fiber ends. Prepare and splice fiber per the instructions of the applicable splice equipment manufacturer. Store fiber splice and excess fiber and splice tray. For Superior Essex closure information and installation procedures, please visit our website. Under the Resources tab, you will find installation guidelines and videos for Superior Optical Fiber Splice Closures.